In this video, we're going to talk about Mendel's Laws. Now, Mendel is this guy right here, and as you might be able to guess from the picture, he didn't live yesterday. He lived in the 1800s. What Mendel, Mendel didn't know all about this wonderful thing of meiosis like we do, but what Mendel did know about was studying characteristics and different traits of people. And he came about most of this stuff through the study of peas. Now, he had a garden where he grew tons of peas, but it wasn't a garden to say, hey, let's make a great meal and have wonderful fresh produce. Nah, he was conducting scientific experiments. He'd pay attention to seed shape in his uh, when he cross-breeded different pea plants. He'd pay attention to the purple flowers and the white flowers. And if I mixed purple flower plants with white flowers, what would the results be? And all these different characteristics that he kept track of all the time. And what we now have are Mendel's laws. And remember that these are scientific laws, like the law of gravity. These aren't laws that, like the speed limit law, that, that from our society people might break from time to time. Not that you would be one of those people, but the, these aren't societal laws. These are scientific laws, laws that explain natural phenomena. For the first of Mendel's laws, we're going to take a, a diploid cell, and we know that there's 23 chromosome pairs, but we're not going to draw all those. We're just going to worry about one chromosome pair for this particular example. And yes, it's diploid, meaning that we have two copies of each chromosome. We've got an orange chromosome here and an orange chromosome here. And I've labeled the alleles on here. So we're going to say that these are alleles for hair color. And we'll say the big A is for dark hair and the little A is for blonde hair. So we've got two copies of the exact same chromosome. And now we know through meiosis that these chromosomes will separate in meiosis 1. And now we have haploid cells, or cells that have one copy of each chromosome in each cell. Now, we also know that in meiosis II, that these chromosomes will separate into individual chromatids. So now each one of the cells are gametes, and they have, they're still haploid, but there's one chromatid for each chromosome in the cell. So the chromatids for the same chromosome will separate into different gametes. And this is touches on Mendel's first law, the law of segregation. It was originally stated that alleles for the same gene will separate into different gametes. And what we see is true, right? The big A and the little a are both alleles for the same gene, and they separated into different gametes. And that's 100% true. But the way that I would like you to remember this is not by using the word alleles and genes, but by using the word chromatids. So chromatids for the same chromosome will separate into different gametes. It's pretty much the exact same thing as uh, Mendel stated it a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But we just want to change it just a little bit to say chromatids from the same chromosome separate into different gametes as Mendel's law of segregation. And I'll show you why I want to say chromatids rather than genes and alleles a little bit later. The next law that Mendel derived. Uh, for this example, we're still going to start with a diploid cell, two copies of the orange chromosome, two copies of the blue chromosome. Same thing, so we got our hair color alleles here, and let's say that these down here on this one are going to be alleles for the height gene. So short allele, tall allele. Uh, and again, rather than drawing all 23 pairs of chromosomes, now we're just going to deal with two pairs of chromosomes. And just like before, the chromosomes are going to separate out. 
creating haploid cells. One copy of the orange chromosome, one copy of the blue chromosome in this cell. Same thing over here, so both cells are still haploid. The chromosomes are going to separate out into chromatids just like before. But for this example, I want to go with one cell at a time. So we're going to take the cell that was over here on the left first. The chromatids separate from one another. Okay, so these are going to end up in a gamete. These are going to end up in a gamete. Okay, so notice that we have the big A allele and the big B allele together in the same gamete. Here, we have the small a allele and the small b allele together in the same gamete. So now let's take a look at the cell on the right. It, everything's going to separate, but here, this would be for brown hair and this would be for short. Well, that doesn't mean that every single time that we have brown hair in a gamete that we have to have also have the allele for being short in the same gamete as well. Sometimes you can have brown hair and be tall. So we're going to separate it out like this, where now we have the big A allele with the little b allele. So we have brown and short, or brown and tall, excuse me. And in this one, we have the little a allele with the big b allele. So we'd have blonde hair and short. So just because we have the big A allele doesn't mean that we always have to have the big B with it in the same gamete. Sometimes we can have the big A with the small b. Here we have the small A with the small b, which can happen, but it doesn't always have to be the case. Here we have the small A with the big B. So there's lots of different possibilities. And this goes to Mendel's second law which is Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment. Let me draw these gametes back up here. Okay, Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment. We're going to know this as chromatids for different chromosomes will separate into gametes independently of one another. So we're still using the same term of chromatids, but this time we're talking about for two or more chromosomes. So here, the big A can go with the big B, but it doesn't have to. The big A could also go with the little b. The small A could go with the small b, but the small A could go with the big B as we've seen here. So just because we have a dominant trait in one gamete doesn't mean that the dominant trait for the other chromatid has to be there. We can get different combinations in the chromatids for different chromosomes separate without regard for one another. So not one chromatid will dictate what the other chromatids or how the other chromatids have to separate at all. So this was originally proposed by Mendel as alleles for, alleles for different genes will separate independently of one another. And again, we don't want to use those alleles and genes. We want to use chromatids for two or more different chromosomes will separate into gametes independently of one another. Yeah. And that's Mendel's law of independent assortment. So here we got a cell. And remember that our chromosomes have thousands of genes located on them. It's not just one. For the simplicity of math, we've just been talking about one gene on the chromosome in our past examples. But like we said, we know that there's thousands of genes on one chromosome. So here, let's just take into account two genes. Again, we're going to stick with our hair color gene. And we're going to say that the D alleles are for eye color. And again, brown hair, blonde hair, and we'll say brown eyes and blue eyes. Okay, so same thing here. Now, if Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment was using terms for genes and alleles, saying alleles for the same, or sorry, alleles for different genes will separate independently of one another. Let's see if that still holds true to this. So where we have, we're talking about genes that are located on the same chromosome. And by the way, before I move on, those are called linked genes. Genes that are located on the same chromosome are linked 
genes. So let's say let's see if Mendel's law of independent assortment still works out for linked genes if we're using terms like genes and alleles. So the chromosomes split apart and we have two new cells, right? Now the cells are haploid and those chromatids will separate from the chromosomes and end up in our gametes. Now, no crossover has happened or anything, but as we see, the big A is always with the big D, the little a is always with the little d. Now, wait a second. Metal's law of independent assortment, if we said gene or alleles for different genes will separate into gametes independently of one another, isn't true. The big A and the big D are always together, and the little a and the little d are always together. And we know that not to be the case. So that is the reason why we say chromatids for the same chromosome will separate into different gametes for Mendel's law of segregation. And chromatids on different chromosomes will separate independently of one another for Mendel's law of independent assortment. So in summary, okay, we got our normal diploid cell with our genes for hair color and eye color and for human height. Those are going to separate to initially make haploid cells, one copy of each chromosome, one copy of the orange, one copy of the blue. And those chromosomes are also going to separate. So here we have the big A and the big D with the big B. Here we have the little a, the little d, and the little b. But these, just because this chromosome with the, with the recessive traits or the small alle letter alleles here, doesn't mean that it always has to go with the small letter allele from the other chromosome. So if these guys separate, we can get all of the different combinations because they separate independently of one another. So with the big A and the big D, now we have the small b, and over here, this time with the little a and the little d, we have the big B. The last thing that I'd like to do is help out a little bit with a test situation. Invariably, you're going to have a situation in, in which you're given some scenario and you're going to have to determine whether or not that, that particular situation deals with Mendel's Law of Segregation or Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment. So Mendel's Law of Segregation, segregation is one word. And as we determined before, Mendel's Law of Segregation deals with chromatids from the same chromosome. One chromosome will separate into different gametes. So segregation, that's one word, is dealing with one chromosome. The other one of Mendel's Law is Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment. Well, independent assortment, that's two words. Also, Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment deals with chromatids separating into gametes independently of one another. Chromatids from two or more chromosomes. So, again, independent assortment, two words, is talking about two chromosomes. So, it's just an easy little mind trick to help you differentiate. Mendel's law of segregation, one word, deals with genes on one chromosome. Independent assortment, two words, is Mendel's law of independent assortment is dealing with two chromosomes. And there's much more to all this wonderful stuff and how it connects with meiosis, but that's what class is for. So for right now, that's all she wrote. It's like this and like that and like this and a It's like that and like this and like that and a It's like this So just chill to the next episode